topic. <laughs> I gotta say though, a hundred people sounds a lot fewer than it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, welcome everyone to Hacking the School, a small little case study focused on me about where I'd like to compare two very different educational styles. One being the one you're very familiar with here, good old high school. <laughs> the system that we're all very familiar with, sit down, look forward, and listen to a teacher. And it's been around since, well, according to Wikipedia, since the times of the old Greek Empire, like with um, Plato and everyone. So it's been a bit tested, but it might be showing its age here soon. <laughs> and the new system would be one represented by the Rogue Hack Lab, a local institution that only recently had to shut down due to lack of funding, sadly. But they focus their education in a very interesting way, mostly in acting nothing like an, act an official educational industry. Or, in, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't hold much for classes, and anything they had that was like a class was more of a seminar, a one-time thing that you came in, listened to, and then moved on to the next being something like a workshop, where a whole bunch of people would get together, and say, I want to build this thing and we're going to figure out how to build it along the way. And it, people learn as they build things, but it's also <coughs> a new method, and it's not exactly as refined as we've got before of the old platonic high school method. So for a minute here, I'd like to just take my experience with both of these and contrast the two to see just how much they've come up with and how they compare. First, the classic, what all I've learned this is a list of the various things that I learned just having fun and thinking around in the hack lab. Uh, to keep it brief, I'm going to try to say them all in one breath. Okay. All right, at the hack lab, I learned how to model in 3D using Blender, program C Sharp and XNA in the Unity API with the Unity 3D game engine, learn how to animate for video games, audio composition in LMMS, mostly on the musical side of things, audio effects and engineering using Audacity, video effects and editing in PowerDirector 12, Financial record keeping, keeping, audio video broadcasting, project management, graphic design, file server systems, game, and level design, and now I'm slightly lightheaded. <laughs> now let's contrast that to all of the things that I have learned and retained from high school. <laughs> I learned German. I couldn't speak German before high school, and it's arguable if I can now. <laughs> and before my physics knowledge was things fall, but now I can tell you how they fall mathematically. <laughs> in German. <laughs> and that's about it. But surely, with school being a much more well-funded system than the Hack Lab, I mean, the Hack Lab didn't even see millions of dollars, whereas the school whines if they don't get it. <laughs> so... <laughs> So hopefully, the, so it would stand to reason that the school would be able to offer more experience in networking and things like more things that I could get and do. So let's see what all I got and did out of high school. Well, I got a piece of paper. It's a pretty nice piece of paper. It looks pretty. It's fairly well designed. It has a signature on it. And I took some field trips. Everyone loading a bus go somewhere. That's something the high club couldn't pay for. Uh, surely that's got to outdo the hack lab, but I started my own business, working off things I knew in the hack lab. I made my own video game, or at least I'm working on it right now, that will hopefully we'll be able to sell and actually create a profitable company out of it. I got in touch and got to rub elbows with directors over at ScienceWorks, like Chip in the back back there, and got, I can't even remember at this point how many hours I've uh, volunteered at ScienceWorks just helping out with the hack lab. <coughs> so then the last criteria I could think of to try to make this seem a little less one-sided would be how many people I met. I mean, the hack lab was fairly small. I should be able to say that all of my teachers I met and everyone would easily outweigh that. But then you think about the quality of relationships. And when you think about people I met at the hack lab, people like Steve Utt, one of the, um, I still don't know how to pronounce his last name, I don't know if it's that or who it is. I'm terribly sorry if Steve hears this. But people like Steve, one of the directors at ScienceWorks. I'm actually working with a 
top secret project on him right now that I would love to tell you about, but he would chew my head off. <laughs> People like Mark Cardillo, one of the founders of the Rogue Hack Lab, and as far as I'm aware, one of the most prominent tech figures in the Valley right now. People like Teresa Thomas, a reporter over at the Mail Tribune, actually did a front page news article on me. And high school, I met my teachers. They're nice people. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's obvious which one, at least in this case, worked better. Now, I'm not saying that I am every student, and I'm not saying that this is representative of everyone, but it does bring up the point of, if, at least in this one instance, if the Hack Lab works so much better to educate me for the future, what's the difference? What did they do differently that actually brought about this change, this extra value that came to my life as opposed to the high school system? So I sat down for a few hours and thought it out, and the main thing I found is the learning methods or the teaching methods. High school tends to work off an information broadcast system. Basically someone, like right now, stands at the front of a room, talks for an hour, and you pick up what you hear, and hopefully it sticks. It's easy, it applies to everything, and it works fairly well. But it's not the only way to teach. And the Hack Lab tend to use more of a project-based, goal-oriented system, where they wouldn't learn the, base, the systems of how it works. They would do it. They would say, I want to build something. Let's make something tangible. And they had a clear endpoint and result in mind. They wanted this out of what they're going to learn. It wasn't just, let's learn something. It was, let's get to this point in what we're learning. And that seems to be a big difference. I mean, as my dad used to always say, the best way to learn is to do. Thank you. certain that went way under the expected time frame <laughs> so let's try to fill that with a whole bunch of questions <laughs> does anyone have any yes uh you want the mic uh, i sure. think we can hear we can hear i think you guys can hear me i'm a pretty loud person i get comments on this my teachers used to yell at me for this but anyway um how did you find the hack lab because it was so it seems so like it was so personalized to you like how would other students find those kind of things within the community I wish I had an answer for that for everyone the issue is that everyone's personalized system mm -hmm. would be totally personalized to them and I'll admit the hack lab wasn't perfect for me um, I originally found it through my brother who I don't know how he got in. I think he was a friend with one of the other founders. And he introduced this to me really early on. So I got to be there from the startup phase when it was literally just three guys on their laptops in there, all the way through to what it was doing right before it ended up crashing. And I think it was more the exposure to it early on that helped like synergize between the two. But as far as how to apply that exact instance to every single individual, I'm not qualified to say that, unfortunately. Uh, yes, in the back. What is one thing you would do more of, and what should we do more of in high school, and what should we do less of in high school? Less of, I would be the easier one, would just be the, the time put in. Because people sit and they stare forward for eight hours a day. People go to high school full time, and very few of them leave with any more than that piece of paper I showed, the high school diploma. It'd be nice to see the time cut down a bit and reallocated to something tangible, something where like the project-based and goal-oriented system was in play. Did you get any credit um, at your high school for the work that you did at the Hack Lab? No. Okay, so like even when the product was completed, there, there isn't a way to take that product and say, here's what I built. And uh, The closest I got for that was the game I'm working on right now mm -hmm. is my senior project, but you would be surprised how hard it was to actually get that to be my senior project. To get it to qualify. Yeah, yeah, I had to go all the way up to Miss Jaime, who was, I think, 
I forget the actual title, but she's sort of the teacher who runs all the senior projects. I had to go all the way up to her to actually verify that I could do this as my project. So. And just a, a quick comment. I, I've been to the Hack Lab. I know Mike and Cardillo. I think it's a travesty that they lost their space and their funding. And why don't we have it at one of our high schools? I mean, that just seems like a no-brainer to me. Um, or a library or something. It seems like there should be a place in this community for a maker space. And I've never under I haven't understood that. You should have given this talk. I took five slides. <laughs> <months. laughs> One sentence. Yeah. Now, Patrick, uh, this year we introduced something called the Fabrication Lab at South. Have you had a chance to get in there at CCL? Uh, I have not, but I am scheduled to take that as a class next semester. Yeah. I'm really excited to see how it worked out. It's definitely a step in the right direction, and I would like to see more things like that done in the future. So when, when Ms. Startsvik asked that question, that's, that's the thought that came to my mind. Because we really created that class with something like that in mind, with the hat lab in mind. So it's this open, well-equipped, well-resourced space where students can come and just do exactly what you were talking about in your presentation. That fab lab is amazing. I just saw that last yeah. week. And yeah. half the classroom is computers. Yeah. And the kids are designing their product. Then they had this huge exactly. 3D printer. Exactly. And then they had this huge uh, cuts cutter. metal. Is that Plasma laser? Cutter. Okay. CNC machine. It takes any black and exactly. white image you put it in and exactly. you can cut the metal. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> so, no, I'm worried. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chip, for the back. Yeah, just, just briefly, I just uh, along the same line is um, we, we've just recently um, uh, started working with the CTE group, uh, and they're all over. Um, but Grant's class, Medford, um, and their their shops are outfitted, as you say, just really exquisitely. A dedicated bunch of educators who really are thinking about project-based education. So this. Just to say that it's not happening, it's, it, it is happening, but it probably is happening a lot more. So just a shout out on the, on the in defense of, of some great uh, project-based education that's going on in high schools. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I was just trying to get a really um, yeah. clear view. So I'll admit it wasn't exactly perfectly fair on either side, more just getting the point. Uh, Michelle? Can you talk about when this sort of thing? Oh yeah, so Unscriver Game Studios is a small indie de game development thing we have going on here. It's based in my mom, one of her apartments, and we've got just a group of a couple teenagers who sit down at some computers I made quite literally out of the trash <coughs> to help make a video game. I mean, does anyone in the studio want to stand up real quick?